we need to open with uh, elections. Yes. For our officers. So my understanding is that um, Baba Hearn is no longer on the board of oversight. Correct. You are taking the seat of the select board member, and then Correct. Tom Find the Kevitz is sliding into like the member at large or the community yeah. member or whatever. Correct. So Tom Find the Kevitz was our is our vice chair. Baba Hearn was our chair. Uh, so we are now without a chair, um, and so we will we'll need to. Um, make a motion and elect, and depending on who that is. I would like to nominate Tom Biden Kevitz as the chair. I'll second that. In absentia, I love it. Are there any other nominations? None for me. No? no. I, I, don't. I, I don't know who, who calls for a roll call here. Um. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't, I don't, this is my first time. I'll call for a roll call then. Okay, great. All those in favor for Tom, if I can to the chair. Uh, that's wow, well, unanimous. Uh, um, uh, that means that now the vice chair position is vacant. Do I hear a <laughs> well, and, and, unless, unless he wants to self-nominate himself. <clears throat> <laughs> Figured that was coming. Yeah, as, as I would argue, maybe Gary Stone. I would argue. Well, that's fair. That's fair. As the as the two people who are easily the most knowledgeable about ambulance services among this group. I, I, again, I apologize. I don't know your background, so you might have thirty years under your belt, and I don't know it. I apologize. Okay, maybe we'll go with that. <laughs> um, I'll accept. I, I'd like Matt to be that. So you you nominating Matt? I'll I am. I'll second that nomination. All those in favor? Yeah. Can I vote for myself or no? You can. You can. You absolutely can. <laughs> Don't lose by one vote. That's okay. embarrassing. Yeah. All right. We got some business done. Thank you very much for facilitating that. My job here is done. Uh, the yeah, Matt gets her on the meeting. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, I guess the first order of business is to review the director's report. I uh, last last uh, month's minutes. Probably. Oh, okay. Uh, motion to approve last month's minutes would be usually make a motion to approve last month's minutes. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? I'll understand it was in here. Okay. okay. That was April, right? April. Yeah, yeah it would have been April. Uh, three, mm -hmm. zero, one. No, we didn't. Oh, that's right. We didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all right. right. Now, now let's do director's report. Does that sound all right? Okay. All right. Um, May, South County EMS, uh, was our busiest month ever. Uh, that calendar, uh, that month we did 123 calls for service. Um, it's, I should say, not just calls for service. That's 123 requests for patient assessment. There's some uh, nomenclature for you. 20% uh, of that notably was mutual aid. Um, and even more so, the significant majority of that was to areas that are typically covered by American Medical Response. Um, so to the communities of Greenfield, Turners, uh, things like that. So. Uh, this is, you know, mutual aid is supposed to be mutual. Um, uh, if, if we could cover all of our calls, if everybody could cover all their calls and we never need a mutual aid, it would probably mean that we're overstaffed, over-equipped. So it makes sense that, you know, on busy days, we kind of scratch each other's backs and we help out. Um, but for us to be going mutual aid 25 times last month, um, and I don't know how many times we received it. I don't have that report in front of me, but usually it's between one to two times a week um, the disparity there is quite notable and quite frankly i think you know in those communities or rather amr we are subsidizing their ambulance coverage um, so they are signing a contract with those communities to provide an ambulance but when they're not available it doesn't matter because south county will just come up and do that for them. And we don't get any revenue out of that, or we do? We do in whatever we would bill the patient. 
So it's still just like if the call was locally, um, but that's, you know, we are staffed and funded to do about 100 calls a month. You know, that month we did 123. And so when 50% of our budget is comes from billing revenue and 50 from taxation, that means that there's actually a deficit here for us, right? That we are, the, the calls that, the, the money we're getting in revenue for treating those patients does not fully cover, you know, an ambulance call. It doesn't. I, it's because of insurance coverage? Because of insurance payments? Well, it's a different community profile for insurance coverage too. There's that too. Um, uh, more, more Medicaid, more, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so this is a thing. This is a thing that we've been talking about at the county level, like for the last two years. Franklin County EMS Committee getting all the, the stakeholders together, um, as far as all the EMS services, and being like, how do we look at this as a more regional problem? We should have enough resources in the region if we use them smartly. Um, and I think I. We're working towards it. I think part of the problems are some of us are paramedics, some of us are basic. And so the state requires for certain calls that a paramedic must respond. Um, also, the majority of, well, we have different funding streams, right? Some of us are like fully volunteer, others are taxpayer supported, others are for-profit private. And so those all have kind of conflicting you know, goals or underlying things. Um, so there's a lot of moving pieces. I will say like, we acknowledge it's broken. We're not sure what the solution is. Um, I, I know Gill recently uh, in the paper has announced that they are going to be signing a contract, I think with Northfield EMS, so that in that contract, they are providing funding up front to help fund the service and put staff in the station and things like that. So they are able to respond and Gill is paying for that service. Um, but I don't know what you do when it's a for-profit American medical response that doesn't want to attend the meeting, so doesn't type stuff. Can I ask two questions? Always. The first one would be, did our intercept calls, mutual aid calls, I'm sorry. Mutual aid, yep. Did they impact any calls for our three towns during that time. And the only reason I ask is that I happen to notice um, within the last month, maybe, um, there was, a, I think it was AMR ambulance that was treating, talking with, I mean, they were certainly on a call at the Whitley Diner. Yeah. And I just, I, and I wondered, because hmm, they, they weren't in any rush. Yeah. And, and so I was wondering, did, did any of the calls that we responded to Greenfield Journey, et cetera, not allow us to serve the residents in the, in the, in the three towns? I think the short answer is yeah, absolutely. Um, there were- a But you must have that documented. One I, I mean, it's, it's the, yes, I mean, it's not like we keep like a, a pin board of these are the calls that we missed, but like it would be okay. easy enough to look and see, oh, we were dispatched here mutual aid and then we got another call within the next 15 minutes here and so that would have been one of them. We can totally track that. Um, it's, there were some days where it was very notable, right? I mean, like I'm getting nods in the room from the providers like, yep, tone to Greenfield, head up to Greenfield and then well, you know, we're up there on scene, then we get dispatched to a call in Amherst, or not in Amherst, but in Sunderland, and they have to send Amherst in or something like that. Um, I, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, I go back to that. If we never need a mutual aid, we would be overstaffed. So there's always gonna be a little bit of that, um, but um, it's certainly become more apparent and obvious recently. Because I want to be the good neighbor. I mean, I don't want to turn into me down. Right. Shame on us if we do. But I'm just so I'm just wondering because because someone at some point will ask for that detailed data, yeah. and we should be prepared to, to answer that. Yeah. Um. I, I actually I, I lied. I have two more questions. Please. Um. I'm I'm curious what the numbers are in terms of cost for a run to Greenfield or Turner's as opposed to what the average pay is I know you, I know it's gonna vary you mean like what we receive in billing what we receive as opposed to what the costs are yeah because that's a number you should bring to your meeting and it's also a number that we should have for our three towns because people are gonna ask 
Yeah, but it's wear and tear on equipment. Not I get that. Oh, I get that, but that should be all factored in. Yeah, but not just staff. Oh, I know. I know, and that, and that cost to wear and tear should be factored in to the extent possible. Yeah, you could easily do some calculations about, like, each run costs roughly this in maintenance and fuel. You know, just divide those out. The, the payer base... The payer base is going to be interesting. And, you know, I think like in general, Greenfield's a more poor community than Deerfield. Um, but the types of people who rely on ambulances as their entrance into primary care or into medical services tend to be of a similar strata too. So um, I, I don't want to like, I don't, you're, you're right. But I don't want to paint this picture that like really it's going to you know be something totally egregious that like oh no you know we're talking thousands of dollars yeah. I, I mean I think it might average to like you know seventy dollars or a hundred dollars or type thing per call but I'm just curious. Um, yeah um, it's curious just date date as I was your friend yeah okay I mean, it might be interesting down the road to to know what that is yeah. well it's just that Medicare and Medicaid only pay you know, so, half totally. of what a private insurance and blue cross pay seven one. But there's the real point was right. that you know if if you were assuming that somebody's like sixty six and is on Medicare and and got Medicaid yeah. in Deerfield, the same thing's holding true for for the, the yes, yeah, right, 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 yeah, and I right, and yeah. so and a significant not, portion of the people that we transport in all of the communities are on fixed income or on Medicare right. on Medicaid or welcome to our region and, right. that's, and so. they go to primary care through the yeah. ER right <coughs> right right the okay. part that concerns me is if you go back and you look in 2021 we went to Greenfield 26 times in 22 we went to Greenfield 77 times and through May in 23 we've been to Greenfield 49 times mm -hmm. so they tripled the number from uh, our responses to Greenfield tripled between 21 and 22 right. and from 22 to 23 we are on track to do well over 100 calls if the trend continues right. so the follow-up question to that would be what's the ratio there are we responding to proportionately more calls that they have in totality go the question right or are we is it just that they have more calls because we're an aging society and etc cetera, etc cetera? that's the key question yeah right but well, the follow-up question would be is how many times are we requiring mutual aid into our communities because we're in Greenfield right it's all connected and because right. so yeah. that distorts our mutual aid when you're looking just at mutual aid is it because we're being pulled out of the community and we miss those calls or are we, is it truly mutual aid? I guess that's where I would want to know. That. I would want to know both, but yeah. 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 And we need a map. And we're actually at 62. Uh, Zoe was saying that we've already had 13 calls this month to Greenfield. So we're actually at 62 at a halfway point. We did 77 right. last year. We're on track to do, if we just did the same thing for the rest of the year, we're at 124. Yeah, right. Will they share total calls with you so we can see what that ratio is, or? We could get it out of Greenfield Dispatch easily. Oh, anything, record, I would imagine. Anything that comes from American Medical Response, they'll just, um, they'll call it proprietary and they won't share it. Greenfield uh, Fire would have, or Greenfield Dispatch would have. Yeah, the city of Greenfield, no problem, I can ask. We should, we should um, do that, because both, both this way and yours, they're, they're, they're joined at the hip. Yeah. Um, it yeah it should be that should be pretty close um so you're gonna have to stay now for a while so you can follow through on these requests sorry um then zoe my last question and this is more hopefully an attaboy for us what's the response time to greenfield and turners on average because that's going to speak to response times to Conway and Hatfield, if that question ever comes up. Uh, that, I don't know. Uh, Greenfield geographically is so large, um, but... But still, I, what's the average? I wonder if I could run a report here real quick. I mean, I'm sure it's, again, it's mapped and it's pointed. We, we went to 
we went to the, the, the whatever the baseball fields are in the center of town, and it was X, X minutes, and we went to... Yeah, if you just took an average, the average starts to eliminate the highs and lows. Yeah. It was no Does the average week. or the mean? Oh, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're going to give the PTSD back to when we formed this whole thing. Um, yeah, because at this point, um, if we did the same number of calls and, and everything stays even, 10.2% of our calls are going to Greenfield. Yeah. Right, so that's right. basically 10% of our calls that are not being taxpayer funded or it potentially forces us to have we, to but we have more taxpayer funding. Right. And that's, right. the, that's, the, that's the why that question right. is important to answer So because we, we don't know at this point. Right, right. right. but we're mis missing the revenue if we are requiring mutual aid from other communities at the same time. That, Say that again. If we require Amherst to come in, Amherst is getting the billing for our one of our calls. And we're getting the billing for one of their calls, yeah. so what's that? That's so true. then where does that balance out? Yeah. Yeah. If you look at, back in 21, <coughs> Greenfield was 26 out of 80 calls. How long have they had AM AMR? In, Did they have AMR in 21? Right, but you got to remember, probably the 21 people were calling ambulances right. a lot. So in 22, right. it became right. 77, 77 out of 145, so it was more than half of our mutual no, aid. This year, we're at 49 out of 80 through the end of May. That's just mutual aid. Mutual aid, oh, 80 mutual aid calls in total, and 49, 49 have gone to Greenfield. So five eighths of our mutual aid has been going to Greenfield. Yeah. Also, our population centers. Well, you know, so we're going to go to Greenfield more often than we go to Conway. Yeah. Just right. for that reason too. Or Turner's right. or yeah, right. Orange or wherever. Yeah. But if yeah. Greenfield's call volume isn't increasing, exactly. but our mutual aid yes. is, right. they're understaffed. Right. Right. They're right. saving. AMR is not doing a good job. So, and AMR is making more money doing hospital transfers than they are doing 911. So it becomes the game of are they short, and I'm not accusing anybody, I'm asking, are they short staffing 911 to do the more profitable hospital runs? Well, you only do 911 calls when, because you, when your trucks are going to be idle between your money making calls. That's the only reason you take on 911. What happens if you blow off a 911 call. Well, you better have written your contract smartly, which is I think what they what they do for So, they do this thing where they write a contract they say we will make we will dedicate two ambulances to the city of Greenfield. 24/7 we've dedicated two ambulances. And then those two ambulances just do money making transfers down to base state all day long. Oh, okay, I'm going to ask the question differently. What happens to the person who called 911 if that call gets blown off? Because they they would rather do in a hospital call than they're waiting on a, a mutual aid ambulance. To right. Yes. The surrounding community. Yes. Right. And, right. And, and so you could argue <coughs> the bigger I'll, I'll, I'll stop. The bigger question here gets to be looking at how often is Colerain getting pulled in? Gary's not here. No. How often is Colerain getting pulled into Greenfield? How often? Just as often as we are, right? Turner's getting pulled into yeah. Greenfield. Land on the call. On yeah. The Run card. Yeah. Is and that arbitrary? What, the run cards? Yeah. So that could be a question to, to Greenfields. If you only have two ambulances, you actually need three because right now your ambulance service is yeah. taxing the rest of right. the communities around you I, for yes. mutual aid. And this is exactly the conversation we've been having for two years at the, at the county level. Right. And where we hit a dead end is that. It's like, great, file your complaint with AMR Corporate in Boulder, Colorado. You know, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll take it under consideration mm -hmm. or something. Sure. I'd say um, it's, it's the responsibility of the community, um, you know, who's contracting with the service. Yeah. They're the ones that are also at fault. Uh -huh. I right. don't disagree. And, and if you want to talk about turnabout, AMR, because of other communities in the county that don't have their own ambulances, so Gill, Leiden, Shelburne, those are towns that don't have an ambulance. They rely on other communities. They were calling AMR mutual aid, and AMR recently put their foot down and said, if we do not have a contract with you, we will not respond. And so if somebody in Leiden calls 911 and says, I need an ambulance, that 911 dispatcher calls over to AMR and says, we need an ambulance in Leiden. 
And AMR goes, no, we don't do that. And so then that poor dispatcher looks at their chart and they go, okay, I guess we'll try Colerain. And they turn out Colerain, and Colerain's a volunteer ambulance, volunteer ambulance service nonprofit, and they muster the crew and they respond. And Leiden hasn't paid into, this is all like, I think Leiden actually does pay in, but like, you know, that community hasn't otherwise, it's, it's a total mess, it's a total disaster. If we could solve it here at this meeting, well, we would yeah. have solved it, you know, <laughs> yep, all right. But <laughs> as much as we can throw up our hand and say we can't control AMR, we can write a letter with, with more data than we've discussed here to the, to the Department of Public Health. Mm -hmm. They're the oversight body, aren't they? <laughs> so every municipality, every town is required to file what's called a service zone plan with the Department of Public Health, which states explicitly where the ambulance will come from mm -hmm. for their town. And that service zone plan must be approved at the regional level, so they have eyes on everything, and also approved by DPH, and then yes, you may enact this. If a municipality doesn't submit a service zone plan, or submits one that isn't um, approved, there's no recourse. There, there is no teeth there. Um, and so there's actually, uh, OEMS is a regulatory agency over ambulances, but... They're not a regulatory agency for communities that have no ambulance. And you can't like force I, like DPH can't tell you, you know what, you're going to need to pony up an extra half a million and add staff and buy another ambulance, right? And so, although, but they can issue a letter saying that you are deficient in the services you are providing to your residents. As it just may, matter of fact, but EMS is not an essential service in the Commonwealth. There's nothing in writing that says you have to provide EMS coverage to your citizens. So anything is better than what's required. Only fire and police are essential services, and we have a state police, so we don't even have to really worry about that. Okay, so putting a political hat on for a second, <laughs> yeah. and this only works for Greenfield. Mm -hmm. If Greenfield, then you find out what the runtime is for AMR and for mutual aid, and you call the mayor and say, I don't know who the mayor of Greenfield is these days, but Clearly, you're not. What's that? Roxanne Reedberg. I mean, I'm, I'm not. I'm not oh, saying this yeah. is accurate, but yeah. you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing on behalf of your senior citizens, and it's largely senior citizens. Uh, I, yeah. No, I don't. I mean, we're we're fighting the same fight, right? How much does Greenfield pay for AMR? Zero dollars. Wait, I'm sorry. Zero dollars. They have a zero dollar contract with AMR. Yes. So AMR makes all of its revenue based upon hospital transfers and building revenue to 911 when they are available to do so. And so is the mayor going to say, you're on a fixed income, you need an ambulance, I'm going to raise your taxes? Or are they going to say, if people are dying of heart attacks and having scalps yeah. left and right? It's the same conversation yeah. we had back in 2001. Totally. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we won that conversation, yeah. you need to remind yeah. And I think well, we're much better off for it. We, we were taxpayer funded. Well, I, I, I get that well, to some so extent. I mean, to whatever percentage that. The question I have for you is the, 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 uh, this, the software that you have has a lot of analytics tools in it. Yes. So we probably, after your departure, we probably should come up with what are the metrics that we are not getting now that we should have and to build the formulas and track it monthly because uh, at some point it is a political discussion that needs to be had. Um, you know, because yeah, we're we're spending as a, as three communities almost six hundred thousand a year, and Greenfield spending nothing, and we're going over there, right? right. And Colerain's going over there, and, and tax money. Yes, yeah, so right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. One hundred percent. And that's so. Tim, what you're saying, <coughs> saying is after he le after Zoe leaves. Um, we have to see where he was deficient in his job. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, this is this is a learning thing here. No. It's a learning yeah. thing. Yeah, well, I think we need to no, document. No, I like it the better. Yeah. Well, no, no. Okay. Well, we need to document. We need to get together with the other communities that are servicing Greenfield as well to get right. a, a yeah. total picture of what this looks right. like and then go to Greenfield and say, we've got a problem. Yeah. We've been helping. We can't afford to continue providing right. the level of service that we are. Right. We need you to 
help us solve this and whether it's forcing AMR to put another ambulance in town, adding it's to your existing fire department to hire a firefighter right. paramedics. It, it's dedicated not to, not to hospital transfers. The there has to be some sort, you know, some sort of political the Franklin County EMS here. committee penned a letter and sent it out to all the towns in Franklin County last year, the year before, that basically brought this to the attention. It says, we are at a breaking point. There are some communities that are subsidizing others. If you don't know where your ambulance comes from and you do not know how well they are performing, if you do know where they come from, you need to sit down and iron that out because we are at a breaking point. Either our options are stop responding altogether or we start charging you for these services. Um, that went over like a lead balloon and a Gill Select Board member accused all the ambulance services of violating the RICO statute <laughs> for colluding in like price fixing and stuff. Um, so like this, com like let's keep having this conversation um, and, and really hound this because <clears throat> I, I think we are at, like, we're a victim of our own success down here, right? Where, you know, and AMR knows that if they don't show up, it's actually fine because that person's going to get an ambulance eventually. Um, and they're not going to be held as accountable and as if nobody showed up. I'm, I'm sleeping okay at night with the decision we're making, but it, it can't yeah. persist. Yeah. And it, it may be something that's a bigger issue that needs to be elevated to state legislature to say, hey, yeah. There's a big issue here that's brewing that we need to. Yeah, Massachusetts aging population. When is EMS going to become an essential service? That's it. I mean, I think that's the, that's the first step right. because then it's going to force the communities to like look inwards and be like, oh, what are we providing for service? Even if it's costing us zero dollars, you get what you pay for. And I'm not, I'm not here looking to bankrupt any community. Right. No. What I'm saying is take responsibility, yeah. begin working now, and it doesn't have to happen overnight. But you need to begin working towards a plan. To provide coverage for your communities so to provide the service so Matt to your point does Pittsfield contract with AMR do you know county ambulance and action ambulance they have competing contracts that's how they've always done it are they also for profit or not both of those are for profit so I'm wondering whether the, the communities around Pittsfield have a similar challenge <coughs> As we, because they're the, the population center, obviously in Pittsfield, and and the reason I ask is that, is that, obviously Senator Comerford represents Deerfield and Greenfield, not not Waitley. But you could then ask Senator Mark, or is this an issue in your population center, which is Pittsfield? And if it's not, then you have less of a of an of a of a draw with him because he's just waiting. But if he does, then it, then you see it, then it's being seen as a, as a more universal problem as opposed to mm -hmm. just a, 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 a beef between mm -hmm. Deerfield mm -hmm. Center mm -hmm. and Waitley. Right. Mm -hmm. Can we raise it to the rural director? You know, right. It's just been appointed. The RAD. Rural, rural Affairs. Yeah. And, uh, right. Say, look, here's another rural problem. Yeah. You know, communities can't afford or will not provide emergency medical services, and other communities are picking up the tab. I mean, if, if we build $500 to Greenfield for every call we made last year, they'd still be making out like a bandit because they're paying $0 for their EMS, yeah. and it would only cost them $38.50, you know, $38.5, yeah. uh, and we're paying two hundred and fifty or 300000 you know, for, for the service that we provide for our community. Yeah. But maybe we should do that. It's, it's, a, it's a question. It won't get paid, but who cares? We, we we invoice we invoice the city of Greenfield build and whoops it made into the Greenfield Recorder. Build the difference between AMR's response to us and um, and just yeah. like, it's an uncollectible debt. But hey, what it's I a think point. I, right it might it might be collectible. Though. Well, yeah, it, it, obviously it's we a, know the guy. <laughs> yeah. I think I think this is what Gil did was Northfield said we're going to start sending you a bill for $400 a run or something and Gil was like you can't hold our head over a barrel we've been getting this for free screw you they went to AMR and AMR goes yeah no we'll charge you more it was like five or six hundred dollars a run right. because they're like this isn't free right I mean like this it costs it's just like a fire department right you you like you wouldn't not fund your fire department and then like not get upset if the other community was mad that they had to keep coming into your 
you know, fire alarms and stuff. Right. Yeah, but don't get me going on that. I mean, you, a fire happens and you have eight towns responding and everyone's sitting around looking at each other. <laughs> so, yeah. um, no, this is great. This is good stuff. I think it's... Um, they need the manpower. These numbers are indicative of, you know, people. It's, it's definitely a trend, yeah. theoretically. Um, Probably should move on. Probably. That's good. That's good conversation. No less. Uh, we had our OEMS inspection recently. No corrective actions were needed. Passed with flying colors. Thank you very much to the team that made that happen. Um, we also have our uh, renewed drug license. Um, so that is on the wall. And Maura Healy's, oh no, she's the governor now. Who's the new AG? I don't know. But uh, it, uh, is ugly? No, 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 she's, she's the, um, Andrew Campbell. Thank Campbell, you. Yeah. So, uh, AG Campbell, their office sent out a survey to all 351 communities in Massachusetts, um, and it was a survey regarding ambulance coverage, billing, contracts, things like that, um, with the understanding that what they're investigating is basically uh, billing for ambulance services, price gouging, those types of things. Um, and so every community was required to respond. I responded through South County uh, on behalf of Deerfield, Southern, and Whateley. So they have all the data they need for um, those three towns here. And that included like number of calls we do, type of service, whether we have contracts, what our rates are, things like that. Um, uh, let's see, capital appropriations uh, got approved by the towns. AFG grants are starting to get awarded. They get awarded on a bi-weekly basis on Friday. We haven't been awarded it yet. They have not started into any vehicle awards yet. Um, tomorrow will be the next round of awards. I think when we get closer to a solid idea of what our truck looks like, I will be in contact with our FEMA rep to just be like, can you look a little deeper into where we sit on the list? Okay. Um, awards sometimes continue through December, January. Everything is so delayed because the last one got super delayed because they dumped a ton of extra ARPA money into last the 2021 AFG, so things have gotten pretty backed up. Okay. Uh, uh, have you um, looked at the um, USDA rural development grant? We are, we, our offset is so minuscule, mm -hmm. like it's like 10%, I think, of what they would cover for anything, for any grants that we would put in for. Um, and it's a ton of legwork. So we've talked about some like smaller capital things that we would need to do, that we would think about doing, but it, in the end we would only get 10% covered. Oh, because um, when Scott Source came to visit, he had said he encouraged us to apply for their equipment grant. They had used up their money for this past uh, The next one opens in the fall. Fall, yeah. Um, I, I talked with our local rep in Hadley and um, it's based on population and median income. Whaley qualifies at 0%, Sunderland qualifies at like 30%, and Deerfield qualifies at like 10 or 15% coverage. And because we're a regional service, they said we would go with the median and we would, they would anything we applied for would only be covered up to like 10%. Yeah. And the state rural USDA program in Massachusetts is three hundred thousand dollars total for that. Right. So it, it's a very small. Three hundred thousand dollars for the whole state. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So Scott Source told us one thing, and then when I did research with Linda Nichols, who's the that's local, who I spoke with. Right. Yeah. And he said, well, yeah, no, no, three hundred thousand for the whole state. Yeah. So. And he he sent me all the documents. Yeah. He sent me the uh, the grant application and outline, and it it is a fair amount of legwork and yeah, data to enter to to the yeah. the yeah, no, that's not for a relatively that. small amount of money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh medication pumps. So medication pumps uh, this is going back a long time actually it was they were like mandated but then there weren't any available so they rescinded the mandate and then there wasn't anything approved and anyway. Um, there's a great device out, it's field tested, it's field approved, like Northampton's using them. Yeah, but Global Medical Response uses them. They're crash tested for ground ambulances. 
So those and are and are a third of the price of what we thought we were originally going to pay. So we've got three of those for our three ambulances um, that will be arriving uh, after the new fiscal year. Um, and paramedic Battistoni over here uh, has already started working on the training and orientation program for those. So all of our providers will be brought up to speed on that in-house and so we'll be able to deploy that uh, immediately. Those are great. They allow us to administer some different medications that weren't previously available to us, some better medications based on the science. It also allows us to be more exacting with the dosaging that we're giving. So for our most critical patients, our most complex patients, we can use this pump to make sure that they're getting exactly the right dose that they need. So um, that's a that's a great, uh, great thing that's going to be coming. And the life packs and the Lucas CPR machines um, are queued and they're expected to arrive over like the next six to nine months based on their production time frame. So do those only have to be paid for when they arrive? So like if you get one and then three months later you get the second one and you, you pay for them as they arrive? They will, uh, the, yes, yeah, it's, it's payment on delivery, right. yeah. Um, we've got it broken up into basically an order with two and an order for one okay. um, because there's that micro grant of the AFG that Lori applied right. for to pay for the one to go with the ambulance. Mm -hmm. And so th those are split off together. So we would expect at least two to come as a unit. Once yeah. the order can be um, yeah. shipped together, they'll, they'll do it. But yep, yeah. um, and so that'll all happen uh, in the coming year. So we appropriated 150 yep. for that. Yep. So we only have to appropriate 100? No. Uh, oh. If Lori's thing comes through? Yes. Okay. Yep. So that 50 will automatically be retained towards your ambulance. Right. right. Uh, yeah, it would be, okay. yeah, it would be, un it's, it, it was, roll back to it got approved as capital, right? So it would be unspent. So then it, we would have to, What's the unencumber it or whatever the phrase is to release it back into the yep yeah. okay. yep yeah. just make sure we do that yeah um, EMT Advanced David Zamoyski retiring after almost twenty three years of service uh, first with Town of Deerfield EMS and then uh, continued on with South County EMS his last day is July seventh but we will be having his. Uh, um, retirement celebration here July 22nd it's a Saturday from 1 to 5 it'll be a mingle slash open house we'll have some light refreshments um, and we're gonna do remarks um, at 3 p.m. so we would encourage anybody who wants to thank David for his service to come by that day um, I know he's uh, I, I uh, coerce is a kind of a strong word, but uh, I told him he's allowed to leave early if he wants, but he's got to stick around for the remarks at three. Um, but if you want to come by and also meet the crew and meet the people and, and see the, the station and stuff like that, that'll be a, a great opportunity to do that. Um, with his retirement, uh, we, that means we have a full-time slot open. Um, that posting went up on May 3rd. We followed our normal posting, review, ranking, interview, um, and then finalist procedure. There is a finalist. Uh, she is a current employee, current paramedic of a few years working down in Springfield. Um, uh, lives in town, grew up in town, already has medical control with us, um, and she would love to start uh, as soon as she can. So that would need to be approved by the Deerfield Select Board to full time. She can start before July 1st, um, meaning we'll have some overlap <clears throat> with David. Um, so she would need to be appointed both fiscal year 23 through the remainder and then uh, FY24. She is currently a per diem employee anyway. Um, that was submitted, I, it was a last minute submit in hopes of getting it. Um, I, I would suggest it gets submitted under the recommendation of this board to uh, the dear I was just going to say we're really uncomfortable from as a select board getting a person that hasn't been recommended by the boo so that's fine the boo um, needs to vote that recommendation yeah that's so I understand that yeah and, so, we, and we can put it on the agenda for the 28th just so I understand the process I mean what you said she's a per diem now she so is currently a per diem in, in theory she could be a five-day sort of fill-in 
until this process goes through. A hundred, yes, a hundred percent. So if, if we had, if I had the understanding that, yes, that that would be ultimately um, approved, then yes, she could start sooner with the well, understanding. So we, so we have never not uh, approved. A to, yes, right, absolutely. But it's just, it needs to come from the board. Yeah, but just so I, I understand, a per diem is not under contract, correct? Or is under contract? Because I'm wondering whether it's whether it's sort of a promotion more than a new hire. Uh, it's it's a totally different. It is. Yeah, okay. yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So what's your name? Uh, Morgan Farrick. I would related to the Whaley Farricks. Not that that's germane, but I'm just kind of curious. Uh, Long Plain Road in Deerfield is where she grew up. So I don't know. I don't know if there's any. I feel like everybody's kind of related to everybody else oh. anyway. Um, <laughs> Let's not get into that. But um, okay, I would I would make a motion that that this board recommend to the Deerfield Select Board that Morgan Affair be hired. I'll second. Uh -huh. Mr. Chair, I second. Um, <laughs> any discussion? There being no discussion, I'll move it to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'm going to abstain because I'm going to vote at the select board level. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. I will relay that to her. Um, yeah, and I had uh, I had requested the the last minute appointment on that, knowing that the, the, like we're in a tight time frame, and it looked like the next board of over or the select board meeting wasn't until mid next month, and I didn't want to like get into a situation where she, no, you know, okay, she was going to like give notice and then actually not got appointed or something so this is great okay um uh, that's wonderful news okay and then um oh i don't know if you guys heard this uh my last day is the 30th mm -hmm. yeah yeah um, there's a rumor going around yeah um so my position will be vacant so obviously there needs to be a um, process for finding my replacement. Um, there was Casey Warren. Um, I think she she cc'd the board of oversight. I don't know if she sent it to you separately, but I emailed it in my packet. There's like a legal understanding about the process for hiring and appointing, and there's a question about the job description and stuff like that. Um, I'm not sure if there was some communication or conversation that I wasn't aware of or privy to. Obviously, it's going to be a. So this is just after you're done talking. I yeah no that please. Um, I'm a, I just pulled together a list of professional search companies that do EMS work. I don't know. Um, I haven't had any discussions with any of these. I think some uh, the uh, the labor lawyer that we work with. Um, also provided a couple of these names, and, right. and, and we're not suggesting that any of these are the appropriate thing to do, but when we get into the discussion about how we fill Zoe's position, um, I think it could go a long way to being, you know, good for the, uh, the EMS service here because it takes it out of our, our hands. Somebody comes in and says, you know, these are the things that the towns agree, you know, the, the boo agrees should be what this direct new incoming director is going to do. Um, we'll handle the search, we'll bring you candidates that are qualified, we'll do all the background checks. Um, internal candidates, external candidates, I don't know if there are any... Uh, Tim, did he express an uh, interest in being the being the director, or is he just fill, oh, suggesting him as an interim? Yes, and, and he so doesn't have any interest in filling the role because... Uh, yes, uh, uh, I can't speak specifically for Tim. It's his fiance's birthday today, so mm -hmm. he couldn't attend this meeting. He tried to score a lot of those commitments. But um, uh, I, I do want to recommend Tim Drumgoole as an interim in my absence. He's been like doing operations coordination, um, some CQI stuff, um, and he actually has a degree in EMS management. So we talked about him stepping into that role. He feels very comfortable doing that assuming that he would be actually appointed to interim EMS director with the pay and the authority that is associated with that. And that also it was going to be a relatively temporary thing. Um, he is not interested in staying in that interim role for an extended period of time. 
Um, and it is my understanding, I don't think he would be applying for the, the role um, permanently, mm -hmm. um, but certainly he is my pick for interim. Uh, he's happy to do it as long as it is, th there is a plan to find a permanent. Um, right, and that was one of the things I think is, is that I'm interested in is using your, your, um, your departure and to find a new successor to, to just, there were some questions in the last year about, you know, the service uh, from various sources and I'd like to put those all to bed by doing a, a good search, finding out if there are recommendations from the search committee. I mean, we can, but I think all of these offer different levels. So there's, there's just a straight search for a, a director. There's possible, I don't know who you use when you set up the, you had a really good company that you worked with when you set up and designed yeah, I don't this. think we used a search. I Not a search. I was going to ask, no. I forget how we found you. We no, put out, we listed it, we it. had a number of people who um, applied. Right. We had a committee that went through and anybody who met the qualifications, it was an initial interview. Right. We, we had standard list of questions, rated yeah. everybody who applied. We took that list down to a short list. Right. Um, and I believe from the short list, there was a very public interview that was done mm -hmm. where town members were invited yep. to come and ask the Board of Oversight had questions that we asked and then from there the Board of Oversight deliberated and chose sure so what I, I wasn't speaking clearly so there's there's like these companies offer different services so one of them is just an executive search so you, you employ them for that but when you guys set up this I, I thought I heard talk about this in, in the, the last year that you had an outside advisory company about how this thing should operate. I don't. Yeah, yeah, Bruce Baxter Consulting. Yeah. Okay, so you know maybe Bruce Baxter would be. Was he part of the search? He wasn't part of the search. He he helped us design the position. Right. And kind of gave us advice on what we should look for in a director. Mm -hmm. Some of the things he thought were going to be needed for that person to be successful in yeah. the role. He helped us set up the original agreement too. Well, yeah. So, like, you know, one to you know, one from column A, one from column B. If you don't need the column B, then you just focus on. I'm just saying that these uh, these companies offer a, a multiplicity of, of things that we might want to pursue. I know that Turner's Falls Fire District employed an outside company to find their chief, mm -hmm. um, and s same thing you're describing, right? Yeah. They were just yeah. like a package deal, right? Yeah. And so we we as the boo would have to decide. What what services are we looking for? Just just the the director search, or is there something else that we want to do alongside it? You know, that's that's what we would decide, but we don't have to decide that tonight. I just wanted to give us, you know, a list, and people can look at their websites and see if it makes sense. Some of them apparently are like there's one that's uh, UMass Boston, so I don't know if the state would have, uh, you know, uh, it's like the Collins Center or something. Yeah, it's, it's executive search is UMass Boston. You know, I. I, I don't. I, I tried to do some research on them. I, I looked at Emergency Services Consulting International, and they, they, you know, all of these have slightly different things that they offer. So, um, but we obviously need to move on it relatively quickly. <laughs> so, I, I've got a couple thoughts in terms of the interim. Mm -hmm. As much as I trust your judgment, I think this. I personally, I think the Board of Oversight would be remiss if we didn't at least have a conversation with your recommendation first before we made that decision. Mm -hmm. yeah. Otherwise, uh, otherwise we're gonna open ourselves up to, totally. yeah, yeah. none yeah. of us want that. That's fine. Exactly, yeah. so, and, and it's, it's, in my mind, it's, it's a good thing that Tim is looking to do this for us, you know, the, the time needed, but I don't know a lot of the staff, so it would be good if we could speak with them. Yeah, and I'd love for the staff to join us in that conversation if it's allowed by open meeting. I don't, I don't know how that works. So, because open meeting is kind of a silly law. So, you know, um, I agree. The other thought that I have is that I, I think everyone would agree that there are there are places in the IMA that we could improve. I would like us to review it. 
and I think at the very least a review simultaneously with the search so that the new director knows what he or she is walking into is probably a good idea and the person is not saddled with issues around the IMA that I think are easily resolved because that structurally I don't want to change anything in this thing but procedurally I, I think it probably makes sense to review it and say okay we're, and, and, and maybe have counsel come in and yeah, and talk with us about we it. Had this marked, is a, a weakness. We had marked up a copy of the IMA a number of years ago about things that were like obvious changes or like things to clean up or clarify. So I, still, all those documents still exist. I still have all of those documents. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, man. but I think that's a great point. Yeah, and and and, and then we do it. Just let me just. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then we then we do the search here, and we uh, as always make our recommendation to. Um, <coughs> To the to the Deerfield Select Board. Yeah, I mean, basically, what the search committee would do is let them do all the work. They bring us three or four qualified candidates. We look at them. We decide. We, we make our recommendation as the boo, and then it goes to if, if we're the fiduciary Green Deerfield, then it, it goes to us to ratify the boo's recommendation. And I was Sunderland and Waitley would want to do the same thing. I mean. I, I, I don't think that's the way it well, works. Well, yes, what I mean is that, well, yeah, okay, so Deerfield is the one that has to have them. You vote. Yeah. And, you know, there's never been an issue, an instance where you guys have said, no, right. we're not going right. along with I mean, basically, so. you're represent the three towns are represented on the boo. Right. And then the boo brings it forward and, yeah. Um, I think it's important for, for, for the, for, for staff to meet with whoever the committee I mean, all that kind of stuff. We but finding three or four people first. I, I, but well, I don't know how many they would do. But yeah, I don't know. Hire an executive search committee. They're going to bring in qualified candidates based I, on the record, you know. And they're also going to get going to get three months' salary, probably. Who the the, the search, search committee? Yeah, the yeah, finders. Right. Yeah. We're going to have to. Yeah, we're going to have to pay for yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. I think there's a yeah, benefit. And, and the salary is going to be. Forgive me, I should know this. You're making what now? <sighs> it's it's eighty to ninety. Somewhere in there. So divided by twelve is yeah, you look at twenty. Just call it 20, 25. 20, 25 grand. Yeah. twenty and yeah. twenty five grand. Yeah. Twenty and twenty five grand. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, but if they're bringing you a good candidate oh, right. who's yeah. like a, who lasts, then like it's money well spent because you know, right, you know, right. You don't want to make you, you know even if you hire an executive search company, you can make a mistake. Yeah. There's sure. no question about that. But um, it takes it out of you know. People have conspiracy theories about why this person got hired or that person got hired, and uh, so I, I don't want that responsibility on myself. I mean, I'm happy to look at candidates that have been vetted and meet all the state qualifications. They've had background checks. You know, they, I don't know how you can hide your, a drug check or something, but you know, I, I'm beyond the the time in my career when I had to have have to go there and do those things. But I just think. Uh, you know, it could help us. Yeah. And then we could decide too, is the IMA something that this company could help us review? Or do we want to do that on our own? Or do we want to have the three councils from the towns look at it? I mean, I'm open to anything that works. Yeah, and I, I think the IMA has to be done before. Again, the person wants to know what he or she is right. walking into. We need to give the search company um, all the documents necessary to do the search properly. Well, we are the only one of its kind in the Commonwealth, right? Right. So, I mean, even if you find candidates from Massachusetts, they will not have ever worked in this in a, in a situation that's built like this. Mm -hmm. Maybe similarly with boards and things like that. Right. We are certainly unique. So, right. I, to Jonathan's point, yeah, making no, sure that it's yeah. Yeah. I I think that we need to have a conversation with. We need to get the quals of of all these guys. Absolutely. I'm assuming this, you don't have those. This is just a list. Yeah. That I pulled together saying there are firms. And you know, I'm not saying that I know any of these firms. Um, actually, four of these four of these came from the labor lawyer that works for Deerfield. Uh, the only one that I added was the first one, and that was just based on you know Google. So I have no stake in you know whichever company we identify or any or a different company. So you know, everybody else is equally. Would Would Bruce know people or no? I made a note. I wonder if Bruce would know anybody. Either. Could yeah. Recommend. Yeah. And if there are even somebody out in Western Mass that does this, it's easier accessibility. Still consulting. 
I have no clue. I'm going to have to do the Google thing and see if I can find Bruce Baxter Consulting. And I, I sort of think that it is just to be efficient, Chair's prerogative to figure out how we're going to vet these lists or anybody that Bruce recommends these yeah. people on this list. He can decide how, how, how he wants to move forward with vetting of these guys. But I don't want to pay for three counsel taking a look at me. No, 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 I, 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 the Deerfield, I mean, you guys are the. I'm, I'm all for efficiency. Yeah. I just want everybody to agree at the end of the day that it's been done properly. Just to have a conversation about the IMA and have counsel say, oh, you're missing this or. Yeah, because you've already looked at it and you've had things that you want to change, right? I think there are some things that are very obvious. I think any one of us, if you read it, you're going to be like, why are the terms of a lease agreement with South Deerfield Fire in this? Like, you know, there's going to be things like that. And then there are going to be other things like, oh, you know, if one town doesn't approve the budget, then the whole thing like dissolves. No, there should be, you know, there should be some additional language in there right. to clarify or revisiting or things. I think, it, I think it'll be very obvious once you start looking at it. Now that we've lived it for ten years, you know, what we're actually using, what doesn't make sense, and what we need. Yeah. D does it make sense for you to dig up those the the, the red lined? Oh, version just, and and then just send it to these guys. Oh yeah, I know exactly where it is. Guys oh yeah, yeah. And then take and have and invite. Yeah. Who's it? Who's the? Um, who's the labor lawyer? Yeah. Uh, Kate Petteroff. Kate Petteroff. Yeah. From oh, okay. the NBC. Yeah. Um, and if you forward it, send it just to Chris uh, because you're going to get a message that's saying Casey's not here. ATA Tim Hilchy. Yep. Got it. And then we invite her to the next. To, to a subsequent boo meeting to discuss the IMA yeah. based upon her. Is that right? Seems seem reasonable to me. I, I based mean, upon her suggestions of, 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 of what, what we want to see change in the IMA and whether there are other things that she noticed right. from or, the legal or nothing. I mean, yeah. whatever, you know. Yeah. And do we ever have more than, I mean, this is an unusual situation. You're leaving us soon. Yeah. We want to move this process along expeditiously. Do we ever have a special blue meeting? We're going to have to schedule some blue <laughs> 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 Normally we oh, adjourn yeah. for the summer and we, we come back to September. Yeah. Right. But uh, that's not no. going to happen now. Yeah. No, We've I, got well, just too much on the plate. Yeah. But if you do it smartly, I mean, like, you yeah. have one more. Right. And then make a decision about a firm, and then they go off and they do their thing, and then you come right. back when. Well, I, I, I think except I think you're going to have a meeting on the IMA. You're going to have a meeting on the job description. We should be reviewing the job description before we post it. Probably. The firm. Yeah. You know it, that there has to be some review of that because we have it, it's been it's ten years old. Yeah. Yeah. And and the jobs changed. Or twelve years old. Mm -hmm. and, you know. Hasn't it? Not really. Oh, yeah, I mean, this is a very different service. Right. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. I mean, we have to have a meeting just to organize what we're gonna want to do. In my mind, I mean, we we have to have we should have a separate meeting just on the job description and the IMA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't you don't hire five hundred dollar an hour or four hundred dollar an hour lawyers to go over our IMA if we haven't even done it. Well, I was saying that, 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 right, that Zoe's gone over it, but you want to go over us too she, first? She went over it years ago. Oh, yeah, no, oh, I, that's I, no, true. Yeah, no you should go over it from a board of oversight. I, we were going over it as like a clean up, make sense of this type yeah. of stuff. Because yeah. right. there are a lot of ambiguities. Yeah, yeah. 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 like five years ago. Yeah. yeah. So but it would be helpful to have that. No, I get that. I, I, I have yeah. no problem with yeah. that. I'm just no, and I, I agree. Out. I mean, I think there's probably still language in there that if we dissolved, everybody took their equipment and went back to their own sandbox. And at this I'm point, I'm ready to drive the ambulance back to Italy right now. Do you want three five one? Take that red one. one. You don't. Right. You don't want it. <laughs> I got it. Do I have to go twenty five? That's all it goes. <laughs> Unless you're responding to an emergency. Those strips. Those stop strips. Oh yeah. Even if you're responding to an emergency, it's not going over twenty five. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you put your foot out the door and push yeah, it away. No, you gotta, it's, yeah. All right, so we need to schedule. Yeah. I'm almost tempted to have separate meetings for the IMA and, and the job description. That's fine. No, that's yeah. fine. 
Yeah, we could want to do them one week and the next week, or mm -hmm. one or, night and the next night, uh, or something. You know, the it needs challenges. To be done. I'm not prepared to yeah. schedule that right now. Yes. Um, when you're reviewing the job description, make sure you have like a paramedic in the room who can like oh, translate oh, what oh. some of those things are. I'm sorry. I want you in the room. Seriously. <laughs> yeah, all right. You're running out of time. <laughs> you know, you can come back and visit. We'll buy you a donut. Conflict of interest. Oh my God. As long as that donut only costs forty nine dollars. <laughs> no, seriously. I'm serious. You yeah, should okay, be yeah. in the room. Okay. Not for the not for the search, but for the job description. You okay. should be in the room. Happy to be. And Tom obviously has to be here. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I date wise, I know you're not prepared. I, I'm. My fear is. The longer we go without setting a date, the worse it's going to get to try to set I, a date. I concur. I am away all next week. Um, I know the following week gets us into July 4th week. Anybody on vacation July 4th week? Could we look at it? I'm, I'm available. You're available? Thursday? I could, I could do the Thursday. No, Thursday the 6th? Let me, before I say something not that smart. Well, that's an off week for the Deerfield Select Board, the 5th. So we could do a Wednesday. No, I can't do the Wednesday. So I'll have to do the Thursday. Okay. I can do the 6th. Can we, let's do the, how about if we did the job <coughs> description? Mm -hmm. well, and we also meet with, so people can read it. Yeah. And, uh, well, it was and also meet with, yeah, I think it was. I it sent was it in the packet. Yeah. It was circulated, the job yeah. description. You, you, you assume that those are read. No, no, we, we, we have them in our email boxes, is what we're saying, is that we could send it again, and then you have it twice. Okay. Because you sent it to the Skims uh, um, email boom. right? The boom when did you again. send that? Sorry. Friday, last Friday. Oh, oh, okay. So, um, can I suggest that perhaps the same night we meet to discuss the job description, we also take a half an hour to meet with Tim? Not you. Yeah, Drumgool. Is that his last name? I don't know his last name. Yeah, I believe Drumgool. Did I what, pronounce it correctly? What night was that? Because he gave me his availability. The 6th of July. Is that correct? Is that what we're talking about? Yes. Yes. I didn't realize Tim's an impersonal me. assistant already. That's Tim's regular partner. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, I'm here in place of him. Just okay. this night. All right. As opposed to me, his brother, who's not. <laughs> Does that hurt at all? No. <laughs> um, which I have four attachments here. Which one of the four? Attachments? Does the sixth work? Should say job Maybe description. Yeah. Oh, I, I see. There I might see be an old one and a new one. Chief Doc. I thought maybe probably we had access to his calendar. I see. Chief Doc. Chief Doc. Uh, Chief we're Doc. on shift. You're on shift. Okay. Thursday the sixth. He yes. is on shift with me. Yeah. Oh, on the 16 too. Oh, it's yeah, I'm off oh, it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Actually, that'll be great. Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is the this is the IMA. The chief doc. So. No, that's the job description. That's the job description, isn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. That's good. And then you'll send around the IMA though. Yep. Yeah. I can even put those both in the same email. I'll put the. Uh, Perfect. He did say he is available before the first of July. Before, not after the first of July. I mean, he's not, he's gonna be here, but yeah. he's, he thought that maybe you would want to meet before the first. Is all he Oh, cause you're gone. Oh, you're gone. Yeah. And now I'm fine if you guys want to meet. I'm gonna be away. I right. won't be on able to. I'm travel on the week of the twenty sixth. Okay, yeah. you are. So that means we couldn't have a quorum anyway, right? Because unless. This Tom. Gary Stone, if Gary's he, around, if he came, Tom and, and Gary Tom came, and I came. That's a quorum. And how many members are there? Of the six. Room? There are six, six voting members of the boo. You need four. We got to meet. Yeah. And so, if, if you're if you're available the week of the twenty sixth, that means that uh, Matt and Crystal are the only people, in theory, who wouldn't be. Yeah. Uh, I trust your judgment. I just yeah. It's. I'm just out of town. Yeah. I, I'm around that week. Okay. Um, the twenty seventh probably is the best. No. The twenty ninth. No. <laughs> You're running out of days. The twenty seventh. <laughs> the twenty seventh. No. No. So that would be like 
6 p.m. Would you like me to ask him about the 27th? Yes, please. He's on. He's coming on at 11 p. on the 27th. About the Tuesday night. Yeah. That you're working. You want to chat with him, see yeah, if he can I come in ask. at six. Thank you. Twenty seventh, you said, right? Yes. Okay, they no. Twenty seventh. Twenty seventh to six p.m. Next week from today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Next six Tuesday. PM. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can do it. Are you okay with missing that? I'm fine. Okay. Give okay, Tommy any comments I have. 6 p.m. on the 27th. You'll give a hard time about it, I hope. <laughs> so that's basically just reviewing the job description and meeting with the interim. Tim Jungle. Mm -hmm. Right now, Tim's. And that'll be good because the next night we would be voting on it here for the select board meeting. Oh! So. Oh! Yeah. Oh, that's, n that's nice and clean, assuming yeah. you approve. I mean, you yeah, might. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, I'm a little clean. presumptuous. If, if, if the guy starts checking his Facebook page in the middle of a meeting, there might be an issue. Yeah. yeah. I don't think he will. But I'm just saying. All right, that's fair. All right, so let me get this straight. 27th, you're going to meet with Tim. No. Yeah. 20 yeah. yeah. The job description. Meet with Tim. And you're going to do the job description the same night. That makes sense. That's good. Then we don't. The 6th. Do we want to leave the 6th for the IMA? That's the. I'm okay with that. I don't know. Um, you're available on the sixth. I'm available on the sixth. I am. Let's do the IMA yeah, on the sixth. This get, way, if everything's we can get, done. Yes, yeah, so we can get that off to the lawyer. Man, I wish someone had an invite capability here. Are you putting this into your calendar? Oh yeah. Can you invite me? Hmm. Do you have an iPhone? Yeah, I have an iPad. I have a iOS device? Too, yeah. Great. Okay. What am I inviting you to? Both of these meetings? Yeah. And, and so we're still meeting on the 18th as for regular business, too. Yeah. Right. Well, July 18th? July. Oh, I will not be there for that. Well, we didn't. That was not a regular scheduled boom meeting on the July 18th. The next regular scheduled meeting is September 19th. Yeah, but I don't think we can do that. Right. Yeah. Right, so if you want to schedule anything before yeah. then, yeah. I think we have to yeah. schedule a regular meeting for the rest of the summer. Okay. I, I won't be around for the 18th of July, but if you guys want to meet without me, I don't care right. at all. Okay. I've got a lot the next week. I mean, I can do the 18th easily, but the next week I have a lot of commitments. Crystal, does the 18th work? The 18th works for me. Okay. And then the third um, Tuesday in August is the 15th. Should, again, have a regular meeting. Oh, well, I'm up, I'll be up in the air on that one. Well, tentatively, we could put it in, and then if we have yeah. to alter it. All right, I'm going to be on vacation. The 15th? Yes. When are you back? Following week. 22nd. I, I know or I'm, later that I week. I know I'm not that week. Wednesday, Thursday that week. Actually, Thursday the 17th, or if we want to do the following week. I'd rather do Thursday the 17th. I have a better shot at being there. Okay. I, I would rather have us meet. Because it gets too close. Right, but we're on. Yeah, no, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. Just, we're just playing calendar bingo here. So we said the 17th, is that? 8.17, 6 p.m. And you'll invite me to that one, too? Thanks. <laughs> June 27th. Make sure that's on the job description. July 6th. I am a July 18th. Yes. Yeah. Boom meeting. So Just a, a like a regular boom meeting. meeting. Yeah. And then 817, regular boom meeting. Yeah. Because then we'll have time to work on August 17th. Mm -hmm. Yes. If we're going to do this, we have to make decisions. This kind of stuff. Well, we're going to have to set up. We're going to have to be also for the IMA. We're going to be ready for the um, 
inevitably all three towns are probably going to have a special town meeting. You're going to have to ratify the IMA yeah, all three towns. Yeah. 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 And we need job to for that. Out. We can. If we meet him and then we do the job description on the 27th. It's approved on the 28th. Great. Um, then we we have you know the basis for preparing uh, or bringing in a, a search committee or whatever we decide to do. And, uh, Giving them that and having it posted in the appropriate places. Are there are there EMS specific job posting sites, or is it public safety sites? Or no, there's nothing. There's no like LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. You know, just things, so your yeah. normal job. You're, you're gonna have to go to the central register. Yeah, central register. Central register, okay. LinkedIn, zip yeah. recruiter, all those like regular things. There's okay. no like yeah. There's no specific professional. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A question a kid who asked the question when everyone's ready to leave um you're talking about uh using an outside agency to do some of the process does there was hope that full-time members would have some sort of piece in the hiring process yeah that's what i had mentioned that you and guys are going to be part of right so so, I mean, so how does that work with using we, I, i'm just asking how does that yeah. work with using an outside agency where um there's still like some I would Some assume that we need to instruct the outside it. agency. This is the process we want to see unfold. There needs to be input from the staff, you know, and, and so they would arrange to do that. It's like when we hire somebody to, you know, do um, a design for the town common. We say you have to build in three meetings with the public, you know, so yeah. something similar. Or, you know, this usually an executive search firm. The jobs will get posted everybody would submit resume qualification to the executive search firm they're going to do that typically do the legwork yeah. to make sure you meet all the requirements yeah. or whoever submits i'm sorry i don't mean you but yeah, right. the, the, the proverbial you yeah. yes yeah. the candidate would meet all the requirements right. at that point it's up to us to ask Thank do you. we want to see all those candidates or do we want the executive recruiter to do a pre-screen on the candidates mm -hmm. And then whoever they approve, they would send forward to us. Right. We tell them we want three, we want five, however many, and those are the only people you'd actually interview. Right. And I, when we get to the interview process, my feeling, and we haven't gotten that far yet, is I do want input from the staff, um, whether it's a staff interview, whether we pick representatives to sit on the interview committee. Um, I think we need to, the I, I don't know what the IMA spells out, and I apologize, I haven't read that. Like I said, last time it was a very public process. Right. Um, so we've got to figure out what does that look like, and I, I definitely want input from the team here as to who they choose as their next, is or who's it, chosen as the next director. typical for a director or like an admin level position in towns to be outside agencies filtered, or is it? Generally, like the town does their own public posting and handles it. The department own. has you do search. Yeah. You always hire a committee. No. Oh, not always. That, that's no. why I was asking if, if like, yeah. when, if we were hiring like a new police chief or a we new a admin, search. you would use one of these agencies. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. And if we were, if Casey Warren were leaving and we were hiring a new town administrator, um, we would do a search and. Well, I understand doing yeah. a search, but you would hire a company at $25,000 yeah. or something. Maybe, maybe not. I think the yeah. position is pretty unique. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. It definitely yeah. is. Yeah. What, I, what I would suggest, and I don't know if this is the case or not, but if staff had a list of things that they wanted to see in a director written down, and if staff had somebody in mind that they knew were going to apply, make sure a letter went to the search. If we hire a search committee, we haven't but, even decided that. Yet. No, we, and we oh, haven't. No, right. I'm just asking. But yeah, for but, my, but like, if if you did have somebody in mind that you knew was applying, send a a letter signed by everybody to the search just so that they're taking all the information in. And then Ben and I said, yeah, but the person's background is they were flipping burgers or McDonald's. Yeah. They gotta meet the qualifications. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at least they know, because that's one gonna be one of the criteria that they weigh in terms of who they send to us eventually. 
The next full-time staff meeting is July 31st. I don't know if that would be part of the agenda items. Probably too fast. Well, at least if the full-timers had a conversation oh, about okay. it and were able to be like, oh, these are, these are the metrics or these are the things that we're concerned about or we're looking for, mm -hmm. even that early on, and then yeah. could submit something later. You guys are also, it's a, it's a public meeting, so when we talk about the job description, yeah. We could also collectively together have an earlier meeting than the 31st we can. as full-time members. Mm -hmm. If you want to take the job description and sit down with it and go through it and start redlining it sure. before we get there, have at it. I mean, we're looking for any help that we can get. We want the description to be as inclusive and more importantly, as real as possible. Accurate. Yes. Of course. To your point, it's probably changed from what we put together initially based on the way the organization has changed. So let's make sure we encompass everything that we can. But Matt, I would caution that we don't want the kitchen sink in there as well. No. A job description that reads like, on Tuesday you will do this at 10 No, I, yeah. it, was, it no. was last updated, was it 20, I forget what year it was. It was last updated. I went through it and made sure that like the nomenclature, like that paramedic, advanced cardiac life support, like those things were in there because it was like referring to some terminology that was since. I think it was pre-pandemic though. 2018 maybe, 20, yeah, something like that. Um, but yeah, so like it's. But it wasn't we, even in our current format. Right, like I, I Casey think. Casey had to put it in her right, format. Right, so right. I would say it was definitely pre pandemic, yeah. which would be 18, probably. Yeah, yeah that feels right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's been a while. Yeah, fine. Yeah. Because she had to just just make it, you know, move it around just so, so she could make just it. So just so everyone's right. aware, right? We're talking on, on the 28th, we're talking job description or 27? Job description. 27. 27. Job description and a competition so, with the proposed interest. Right. So we would need input by the 27th. In a week. Yeah. Okay. And you guys, again, are more than welcome to sure. yeah, spend time with us. Because we're just going to be talking about it. <laughs> yeah. I, I find that editing a document, it's always better to have your thoughts written down before you come to the meeting because otherwise, you know, you're, you're going to leave with as many questions as you came in with. If there's any way that you could work together and get it onto one or two documents and then have copies for the group when they come, that would certainly be helpful. And I assume it's going to be edited and send it to Casey to have her go through it. And well, why, why go to Casey first? No, it wouldn't no. go to Casey. Wouldn't go to Casey no. No. Come no, to us after, after we're, yeah. Casey's already reformatted the original one into our current format. Okay. But that's why I know we haven't reviewed it for so long is because we've been using this format for at least four or five years. Okay. So. Just in terms of sub, sub, sub and yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Just and that wasn't. Yeah. That yeah, wasn't. I don't know if it as long as it's the same information. Yeah. Oh, it's the yeah. same. She didn't change the document. Yeah. She just changed the format. Like that a, we at have the to top of our job format. descriptions, there's all this. There's there's like a encapsulated box that says pay grade, you know, exempt, not work. exempt, all yeah. that stuff. All yeah. That stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So so that's why I know it's it's 18 or 19 is the last time we looked at it at the earliest. So it's pretty old. Yeah, that's fine. It's five okay. years old at least. Yeah. I haven't needed one in that time. What's that? No, exactly. Well, yeah, right. The reason that it's you know, is that we have know of. Right, exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's an opportunity to make any changes that seems <coughs> logical for the EMS to, you know, ask us to consider. So, okay. Are we done? Any other business? No, I think we have a game plan. Okay. Um, I'll resubmit that uh, Morgan paperwork with the added language of the recommendation of the BOO? Yes. Um, and I will uh, communicate with her. Um, who's going to communicate with Tom to decide who, how we're going to get information about these people? Because I think getting the information about these different organizations will help us decide if we want to use an organization. Right. Right. I guess That's I can reach out to Tom. Yeah. Vice Chair. Yeah. Assuming he responds to me. Mm-hmm. That was fun. Is he mad at you? No. <laughs> Just don't open <laughs> it. Is that he's the chair now? No. Yeah. Okay. 
may have to go down and put a lock on this boat. So with the note, <laughs> call me to get this unlocked. <laughs> they never All right. Anything else? I think that's it for me. Okay. See you here next week at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. Thursday. Tuesday. I will forward out the job description, and the, the red line IMA. We just said this one. Yep. Um, and I can, do you want me to get those, I'll just get these postings out now for the next, those next three dates. I'll just push them Four out. dates. Oh, uh, yeah, four dates, August yeah, 17th. Yeah, because it has to be, um, um, posted. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that all tomorrow, I'll push mm -hmm. those out tomorrow. Um, which reminds me, we have to adjourn. Okay. Oh, yeah, you guys have to adjourn, too. Motion to adjourn. Second. Any discussion? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 I think the chair's yeah, will attend to the end. I think so. I don't know. 1426. Yeah, so we're going, I'll try to do it by proceeding. Sorry, 1926. Motion to adjourn. 14. Second. Yeah. <laughs> All those in favor? Single GI. Aye. Fair one, that's fine. Okay.